everyone and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Kaylee June and I'm a beauty and fashion photographer based in Sydney, Australia. And on this channel, I post everything photography related from Photoshop tutorials to business videos and even behind the scenes content as well. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about what I feel changed my photography for the better. And I really do feel that there has been a few points in my career that notably to me has changed uh, the course of my photography and the path of my photography. And it's definitely been for the better. So I wanna go through a few of these aspects today and let's get into the video. So the first point I'm going to mention today that I feel really changed my photography for the better was that I learned to utilize all different types of lighting. So if you're an OG watcher of this channel, you may remember that a lot of my initial and earlier work was done outside. It was using natural light. Uh, quite often I would be forced to shoot in the midday sun uh, because I lived a fair way from the city. So I couldn't always get in there at the right times for that beautiful golden hour lighting that I wanted to use. And quite often I was kind of stuck with using lighting that was not ideal in certain situations. But it really helped me to become more confident with using different lighting situations as I went on throughout my career. And if you've watched this channel for a while, you also may remember that I didn't used to do a lot of studio lighting either. It's a very different instance these days because that's what I use mainly for a lot of my portraiture. That was eventually something that I did get into as well. And I actually steered clear of studio lighting for a very long time. It really intimidated me to be honest. and overwhelmed me a lot walking into a studio and it was kind of scary just to see all of the different gadgets and pieces of equipment that I had to learn to use. And it just wasn't really my thing at the time, but the more that I began to experiment with it and to use it and to get myself in those situations where I was kind of forced to use it as well, it really helped me to be really across all different types of lighting situations. And it also really helped me in the future with working with different clients as well. And I felt a lot more comfortable in certain situations. So I highly recommend if there's any type of lighting situation that you haven't tried out yet as a photographer, definitely try to be across all of them and know how to work across different lighting because it can really help improve your confidence as you work and as you grow in your career. So the second point I wanna talk about is the fact that I really stopped using retouching as a way to fix my images and started using it as kind of a final enhancement instead. Now, once again, if you've been watching my channel for a long time, you'll know that I've posted many Photoshop tutorials on my channel, lots of different editing program tutorials, to be honest. And as much as I love retouching and as much as I love certain aspects like color grading and that sort of thing, I feel that my work is very pared back these days. And I tend to use retouching as a form of enhancement and slight enhancement at that rather than something where I need to fix everything on a person's face or I need to fix my photograph, my mistakes that I'm constantly making in camera that I'm actually aware of when I've made those mistakes in camera, I might mention. And quite often I would definitely come across certain things that I'd done accidentally in camera on a shoot and I would just think to myself, oh, it's okay, I'll just fix it in post. Oh, I'll just fix it when I'm retouching later. And I, I really advise against that these days. I think that there's definitely a lot of merit in trying to get the shot that you want in camera from the beginning. There's also a lot more time that you're saving eventually in post, having to correct lighting or shadows or maybe a lot of stray hairs and things like that. I just feel that if you can kind of do as little to your images as possible when retouching, it's kind of a nice feeling and really it is going to save you a lot of time in that process. So I do tend to look at it nowadays as more of a way to enhance my images necessarily than a way to always be fixing them. Having said this though, there's always going to be those times where something goes wrong on a shoot, maybe you haven't noticed it and you do have an image that you really, really love, but there's always going to be those little elements that you can fix in post. That's completely fine. But I think I've just stopped doing this and stopped feeling this way on every shoot that I do now and I kind of look at it as retouching is like that final touch to my image and I really should be looking at how I can get everything right in camera from the beginning. Number three is that I stopped caring about what everyone else was doing and boy was this actually hard to do. I think with the rise of social media over the last 10 years it was incredibly difficult for me to stop caring about what other photographers were doing at any given time and I think even till this day you know you still come across uh, images on social media that you kind of think to yourself well should I be creating that? Maybe I should be doing work that's exactly like that. And sometimes that kind of question is warranted, especially if you're in a specific niche and you're trying to get into more commercialized work, you're trying to uh, get your work at a point where you can earn a lot more money from it. Sometimes those questions need to be asked, but I do think it can really strip you of your creativity when you're constantly asking yourself the question, should I be like this person? Should I do my work like this person? I think it starts to really wear you down a bit when you tend to dwell on things like this. And I think it's really important to stay away from social media 
uh, to an extent throughout the weeks and kind of really just have that time to yourself to develop your own work and really have that focus. Because let's be honest, if your work was just like everyone else's, then it would kind of get boring. And a lot of potential clients as well probably wouldn't see something to differentiate yourself from other photographers too. So try and keep to your own style as hard as it is and try and keep to your own focus and not worry too much about what other people are doing. Number four is a really important one and especially for people who are working with a lot of teams. So for fashion photographers and beauty photographers, this definitely rings true. But the point that I wanna make is that I started collaborating with the right people. And I really do attribute a lot of my success to these people that I've worked with and collaborated with over the years. And I don't think that I would have the portfolio that I have today if it wasn't for the people that I've collaborated with. So this can include makeup artists, hairstylists, fashion stylists, creative directors, nail technicians. There's so many wonderful people that I've collaborated with over the years. And of course, this is a learning process. You're not always gonna collaborate with the right people potentially and it might take you a while to find that team that you really want to work with on a consistent basis but I do believe that when you start collaborating with the right people in your industry magic things can happen and I really think that this is something that I value very highly in beauty photography and fashion photography in particular is finding the right people that you want to work with and really being able to grow with each other and lift each other up. I mean my work quality increased significantly especially with beauty photography once I started working with makeup artists that really knew their stuff uh, when it came to beauty photography and when I worked with hairstylists that were looking at getting into the same field that really had that same passion as well about getting into that field I think really made all the difference with my own work. And the last point that I'm gonna to make today is actually one that I've kind of only implemented, I guess in the last year or so, but I've actually started to pivot a little bit more when I need to and to take more breaks. It's really all about giving myself the chance to be more inspired and less pressure on myself to always be so consistent. Although consistency is always something that we wanna strive for in so many ways, whether that's posting on social media or posting new work, creating new work, Sometimes in our lives, we're just not gonna be that consistent and that's okay. And we're not gonna feel like we wanna be consistent at certain times. There might be times where you suddenly really hate doing photography out of the blue. I know that this has happened to me before where I've just suddenly had this feeling hit me where I just, I don't wanna do photo shoots or I don't wanna organize photo shoots. I don't wanna think about it for a while. So in these instances, I usually either pivot a little bit into doing a slightly different style of photography or a slightly different genre, whether that be product or landscape or even doing more retouching, or I just take a break altogether. And I know that not everyone has that privilege to be able to take a break when they need to. And not everyone's in the situation where they can just pivot very easily. And I totally understand that. But if you do have that opportunity to really be a little bit easier on yourself when it comes to these times, it's definitely something I do recommend doing because as creatives, this kind of stuff shows up in how we perform a lot of the time. And if we're feeling this way about our work, sometimes it's just best to give ourselves a break and to not be so hard on ourselves if we are feeling a little bit overwhelmed or exhausted. And then quite often if I've given my chance to really, I guess, relax or take a step back from photography for a little while, I find myself a lot more rejuvenated with getting back into it and my inspiration is renewed and I'm sort of ready to go and sometimes some of my best work has been produced from having those breaks and then coming back to it at another time and that's really helped my work overall. Well, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video today. I'm not sure whether some of these points were something that you may have expected me to say or not, uh, but I hope that they were helpful for you and if you're feeling like you really wanna make a huge change with your photography or you're really wanting to improve, some of these tips hopefully might be helpful for you in terms of a little bit of guidance uh, for what you may need with your own photography. I know that all of these points that I've talked about today have definitely helped me along the way and definitely changed my photography overall for the better. All right, guys, well, let me know what you thought of this video down below in the comments. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, make sure that you do. I'll be posting much more content in future. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.